Welcome to this online course content that supports preparing to take the Maryland Tree Expert exam. The supplemental presentation to the study guide is intended to aid those individuals who are preparing to take the Maryland Tree Expert exam as required by the Maryland Tree Expert licensing law. Anyone seeking to practice or advertise tree care services in the state of Maryland must obtain this license from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. This presentation corresponds to the information in the online study guide. The text of the study guide, version 5.1, may be found at dnr.maryland.gov forward slash forest. Click on the Urban and Community Forestry tab at the top of the page and then Tree Expert Law in the menu on the left-hand side of the website. Maryland Tree Expert Exam, Study Guide Version 5.1, Chapter 5, Problem Diagnosis. Disease is an abnormal condition of an organism or part as a consequence of infection or environmental stress. It is the result of a pathogen. A pathogen is a causal agent of disease that can include insects, mites, nematodes, fungi, viruses, bacteria, and environmental stress. When diagnosing a tree problem, it is good to know the difference between symptoms and signs. Symptoms are changes in growth or appearance due to disease, insect, or injury, whether biotic or abiotic, that are apparent on a tree. The signs are direct indications or evidence of the causal agent, such as fruiting bodies, emergent holes, and frass. Patterns and timing of damage can indicate the possible cause. When diagnosing and treating plant disease, it is important to understand the plant disease triangle. Disease can only occur if these three things exist at the same time, a pathogen, a host, and a supporting environment. Manipulating a component or combinations of the triangle components influences the incident and severity of the disease. Trees often decline or experience problems due to multiple factors, especially by the time you get called in to do an evaluation, most likely there will be multiple factors. So problem diagnosis is more complex than simply looking for the first insect or disease you can find and then declaring that the problem's been identified. If a person has a cough, they may have a cold or they may have something more serious. A diagnosing physician would want to ask the patient about the problem they are experiencing. They would examine the patient's medical history. They would examine the patient's family medical history and perhaps perform certain standard diagnostic tests. A tree diagnostician should follow a similar pattern of research, observation, and testing to diagnose and recommend treatment for a tree. Proper steps in diagnosing include tree identification. What type of tree are you diagnosing? Sometimes the family history of a tree is very important as certain pests are specific to certain species, genera, or families of plants. Look for something out of the ordinary. The book, The Body Language of Trees, tells us that trees grow in a very logical way. And if something looks unusual, it means that something might be wrong. Learning how to read these signs can help you understand what the tree is telling you about its condition. Trunk lean, decay fungi, root plate heaving, bulges on trunks and spots on leaves all can indicate potential problems. Trees will tell you what the problem is if you look carefully and thoroughly at the entire tree, roots, stem, and crown. It is good to be systematic about the way you evaluate the tree top to bottom or bottom to top so that you don't miss any components. Examination of the site around the tree is important. Has there been trenching, ground disturbance, maybe some herbicide application, storm damage, or other factors that could affect tree health? Examine the site and any available site maintenance history. What is quote unquote the medical history of a tree? This should provide some background on attending tree experts and arborists in the past that have performed certain treatments. 
you may be able to contact the prior practitioners or the owner of the tree may have some history of previous treatments. Look for patterns of previous problems that have received treatments. Perform certain diagnostic tests as appropriate, perhaps a soil test or sounding the tree with a rubber mallet or doing more extensive diagnostic tests. There are helpful tools that help the tree expert evaluate changes in tree ring growth over time. These can include increment borers, resistor graphs, and drills, but keep in mind that these tools are invasive to the tree. Non-invasive tools are increasingly available and help evaluate the extent of internal decay without harming the tree. These include a rubber mallet, sonograms, and radar. They can detect the quantity and quality of remaining wood without disturbing the tree. Root collar excavations, whether performed by hand or with mechanical assistance, can reveal stem girdling roots, whether a tree was planted too deeply or whether the burlap and twine or wire basket was removed at the time of planting. Here is a diagnostic flowchart that can help guide your tree evaluation. As we discussed previously, first identify the tree species, then examine the tree itself. Be systematic about your evaluation. Look for conditions, cracks, bulges, decay, insects, diseases, and any other factor that may contribute to your diagnosis. Examine the site. What's the soil? What's the moisture availability? Was the tree planted too deeply? Was it mulched? Is there no mulch? Examine the maintenance history. What were previous treatments that were applied to the tree and why? Then perform diagnostic tests based on your evaluation. What is the soil that the tree is growing in? What is the pH? If you found evidence of pest, what is the identification of that pest? How much sound wood is available in the tree? And then based on all your findings, provide for an appropriate treatment. Injuries caused by ice, lightning, or pesticides are examples of impacts from abiotic or non-living factors. In urban areas, most tree failure occurs as a result or during storms. If a vertical strip of bark is missing from a point in the crown down to the ground with a rough groove that follows the grain of the wood, this is most likely a lightning strike. This photograph shows an old lightning strike on a Norway spruce trunk. Another abiotic factor that commonly impacts tree health are lawn mowers and weed whackers, as you can see from this damage at the base of this trunk. Diseases caused by bacteria, nematodes, or fungi are examples of impacts caused by biotic or living factors. Anthracnose is a name for a group of diseases caused by several closely related fungi that attack many shade trees. It is common on the foliage and twigs of ash, sycamore, such as in these photographs, maple, and white oak. The anthracnose fungi can also attack walnut, hickory, elm, birch, catalpa, linden, plane tree, tulip tree, and horse chestnut. Symptoms moving from the bottom of the tree upward are typical of anthracnose. Diskula anthracnose, or dogwood anthracnose, is a serious disease which can kill flowering dogwood trees. It is caused by a fungus. Early in the spring, anthracnose fungi may kill twigs and newly expanding leaves, causing symptoms that resemble frost injury. Small sunken dead areas, otherwise known as cankers, can girdle the branches. Infections of the leaves or leaflets can cause dead blotches along leaf veins and sometimes some distortion. Infected leaves and leaflets may drop from the tree, causing defoliation. Holes in the bark with visible frass may be caused by borers. If the holes are in a uniform horizontal band around the trunk without any frass, these are most likely caused by sap suckers. The photograph on the right, the large hole in the tree, is caused by a pileated woodpecker. Caterpillars, such as the gypsy moth caterpillar, cause damage to trees with their chewing mouthparts. 
Leaf miners also cause damage to trees based on chewing mouth parts, such as this locust leaf miner. Let's review some of the signs and symptoms and their possible causes that appear in this table in your study guide on page three. Scales affect the plant with sucking mouth parts. These soft scales, such as elm scale and magnolia scale, produce honeydew on which sooty mold fungi grows, so you may see sooty mold on leaves below the infested branches. When you see white to gray-white fungi on your leaves and the shoots, this could be powdery mildew. When you note a canker, which is a localized area of stem where the bark is sunken or missing, this may be caused by a wound or disease. If you cut a twig sample and you see dark discolored streaks in the young xylem, this is most likely verticillium wilt, which is a vascular disease. If you see mushrooms or fruiting bodies, this indicates decay. Epicormic shoots indicate stress or a weakened plant. In this case, the abiotic factors of construction and over pruning stress this tree. Necrosis is the dieback of tissue. It can be caused by stress, insects and disease, and environmental factors. If you see general chlorosis or lack of chlorophyll on the plant, which is the yellowing of a leaf or leaves, you would look for nutrient deficiencies, pollution perhaps, excess water, construction damage, insect problems, or diseases. Wilting of the leaves is a general symptom that can be caused by many different factors. That may include environmental stresses, drought or lack of water, of course, borers, verticillium wilt, canker disease, winter injury, construction damage, transplanting, anything that affects the vascular system of the tree. Defoliation is a loss of leaves. It can have a variety of causes as well. In this particular case, the viburnum leaf beetle completely defoliated this shrub. Aphids are another insect that damage the plant by sucking. Spider mites are a close relative of insects. They also damage the plant by sucking. Spider mites cause a stippling or bronzing appearance on the foliage. Some clues that you find during your diagnosis may not mean anything. As an example, the exfoliation or peeling of the bark on a mature plane or sycamore tree is actually quite normal. However, peeling bark on a type of tree that doesn't have this pattern under normal conditions would be one of your clues you use during your assessment. Some plant pests travel on their own. Some are carried by vectors or carriers. Elm yellows and Dutch elm disease are both examples of diseases that are often transmitted by insect vectors. In this case, for Dutch elm disease, it is the elm bark beetle. Bacterial leaf scorch is a bacterium thought to be transmitted by plant hoppers. It affects a wide variety of shade trees. It first appears in the lower branches and on the older interior leaves. People are sometimes the vector of pest. Emerald ash borer, for example, was introduced into Maryland on infected nursery stock. Emerald ash borer attacks ash trees and leaves a small D-shaped exit hole on the tree. Asian longhorn beetle is an exotic pest native to Eastern China and Korea. It is a very serious threat to our hardwood species. It has not yet been detected in Maryland. When collecting samples for the purpose of diagnosing plant problems, be sure to include the proper form for that plant disease lab and collect samples that include the transition zone between healthy and infected tissue. Tree experts are often requested to perform tree risk assessments. 
the need for risk assessment is normally based on the premise that personal injury or property damage could result if a certain tree part or tree fail. Because liability is possible, such assessment should be documented in writing. An external swelling or bulge is likely an indicator of internal decay or a cavity. An external rib on a tree is a likely indicator of an internal crack. Decay, which only affects the dead tissue in the center of the tree, is normally referred to as heart rot. Most experts agree that 30 to 35 percent loss of stem diameter due to heart rot requires that some action be taken to address the risk of whole tree failure. Mushrooms or fruiting bodies on a trunk or branch indicate a need for further assessment to determine whether or not internal decay is present. It is important to learn certain decay fungi as they are most assuredly an indicator of rot. Brown rot are fungi that consume cellulose, resulting in wood that is stiff but brittle, like a hard biscuit, and subject to failure without warning. White rots are fungi that consume both the cellulose and lignin, resulting in soft, flaky, or stringy decay that is whitish to reddish brown in color. We hope you found this supplemental presentation to be helpful as you prepare for the tree expert exam. This concludes chapter five, problem diagnosis. Please proceed to chapter six, selection, installation, and establishment.